Ever wonder if your hydraulic system on your tractor is performing to spec? Well, if so, then this is the video for you. Welcome back to DIY My Way. In this video, I'm going to show you the proper tools and techniques you need to test the pressure in your hydraulic system. But before I get into it, I'd like to give a shout out to a new YouTube channel called Pale Horse Outdoors, run by David. David is a Kubota owner and he has quite a few attachments and he's made very informative and entertaining videos that I've started to watch and enjoy very much. There's a link to it right here, so please check him out. I think you'll like it too. To measure hydraulic pressure, you're going to need a hydraulic pressure gauge. I ordered my pressure gauge from boltonhooks.com. If you don't have a hydraulic pressure test gauge, I recommend you get one from boltonhooks.com. They have a section for hydraulic products, including hydraulic tools. That section provides charts to help you determine the type of connector you'll need for your tractor. For instance, I have a Kubota L3901. The required connector is a 3 8 inch ISO 7241B type. Scroll down farther to get to the hydraulic pressure test gauge. Then click Select Options. Choose the required connector from the drop down list. If you're unsure which connector you will need, don't hesitate to contact the good folks at boltonhooks.com. They'll be happy to help you pick the right connector for your tractor. To get an accurate measurement of your tractor's hydraulic pressure, you first need to get the hydraulic fluid to operating temperature. The best way to do this is to drive your tractor around for a while and use your front end loader. Once you've got the hydraulic fluid to operating temperature, turn off the tractor, lower your front end loader, and release the hydraulic pressure on the couplers by moving the joystick in all directions. In order to measure the hydraulic pressure, you have to tap into the hydraulic system. And the best place to do that is at your loader connectors. You have four connectors to choose from, which are typically color coded. You can consult your manual or follow the hoses to verify which function each connector controls. In the case of my LA525 loader, the white capped one lowers the boom. The yellow one behind it raises the boom. The blue one dumps the bucket, and the red one behind it curls the bucket. I'm going to use the lower boom connector. Whenever you're working with high pressure hydraulics, I recommend you have some protection for your eyes, like safety glasses. And I'll wear a glove for handling the pressure gauge. That way, if there's a leak while you're testing it, then you don't get an injection of hydraulic fluid into your skin. Disconnect the connector of your choice. Then connect the gauge to the port on the loader valve. Start the engine and throttle up to at least PTO speed. That's 2500 RPM on my tractor. Your manual may state a specific RPM for the test. If so, set the engine speed to that. With the gauge in hand, move the joystick in the direction that operates the connector function you chose. In my case, it's up to lower the boom. The boom won't actually move since the flow is deadheading into the pressure gauge. The gauge is measuring about 2250 PSI. The spec in my tractor manual is 2349 PSI, so I'm about 100 PSI shy of the spec, which translates to about 4.2% below spec, and that translates to a loss of about 50 pounds of lift capacity. So it may not be worth shimming the relief valve for just 50 pounds more. On the other hand, sometimes 50 pounds more may be all I need to lift a heavy load. After testing, throttle back to idle, turn off the tractor, and relieve the pressure in the system. Then disconnect the pressure gauge and reconnect the coupling. Now 
Now that connected up really easily, but on occasion, even though you relieve the pressure with the joystick after the engine is off, you may find that there's some extra pressure built up in these hoses and you can't connect them. But there's an easy fix for that if that happens. If you find the couplers won't reconnect, you can relieve the pressure on the male end with a hammer and a rag. Place the rag over the male connector and give the tip a sharp tap with the hammer. If you can push the tip in by hand, you have succeeded. For the female connector, you'll need a bolt. A 3 8 inch bolt, 3 inches long or similar, will do nicely. Place the end of the bolt on the end of the connector tip in the female connector. Wrap the rag around the bolt and coupler. Then give the bolt a solid whack with the hammer. You should be able to connect the couplers now. So as a future project, I may be adding some shims to the master relief valve to bring that pressure on up to where it needs to be. I want to make sure I get the maximum performance out of my loader. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you click that like button, leave a comment, and by all means, please subscribe. If you want to know when I post new videos, click that little bell. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.